This blog is about how we pull off the trick of converting geography into something that statistics and computers can understand. And in this clip, we're going to delve with a bit more detail into something called spatial weights matrices, which is the main artifact and the main method we're going to explore to do just this. So let's jump on the slides and talk a little bit more in detail about spatial weights matrices. Remember, the idea here is taking space with all of its complexities, all of its richness, and translating it into something, or, or rather expressing it, the, expressing it formally in a way that statistical methods and um, computers can understand. The trick here is that, for a, or, or why we're doing this, is that for a statistical method to be explicitly spatial, or in other words, to treat space and geography as a first-class citizen, as something that is considered at the very core of the method, the statistics need to have a representation of geography that is expressed in a form that can be understood. And there are, there's a few ways of doing these, um, but the main one that we're going to see here is spatial weights matrices, which are uh, matrices, we'll see that in a second, that can bring spatial context into a, a method that would otherwise be considered aspatial. I always introduce spatial weights matrices by making this analogy. Remember when we were looking on a previous blog at geovisualization, and I said geovisualization is a powerful tool because it can take numbers that are processed by computers and turn them into colors that our brains are much better at processing. So what geovisualization does is a translation that uh, is able to leverage and tap into the most powerful pattern recognition engine in the human brain, which is enabled through color. Now, in this context, spatial voice matrices do the opposite. They take not necessarily color, but they take geography, they take spatial context, they take all of the richness of geographical relationships and translates them into um, numbers and into a matrix, which is a form that is very well understood by computers and is very well understood by statistics. In fact, most of the statistics that we're going to see are based on matrix uh, manipulation and, and, um, and algebra. So this means that we're taking geography, converting it into a matrix, and then for statistics, it means that it, it can be processed and manipulated in the same way as any other type of data. So we're turning, if you want, geography into, um, into a matrix, into a set of uh, numbers that encapsulate and capture spatial relationships. Now, this may sound a little bit abstract, and hopefully by the end of this clip, it'll become a bit clearer, and hopefully by the end of the blog, it'll make a lot more sense. But let me just say up front that there, even though there, it might be a bit of a challenge to understand at the beginning, there's a bit of a steep learning curve to get the idea of what spatial weights matrix is. I think there's a lot of payoff, because once you understand what spatial weights matrices are, you have a long way into understanding a lot of the methodologies that we're going to see in the course, but also a lot of the methodologies that make up spatial statistics. So things that we will see later in the course, like spatial autocorrelation, spatial clustering, or even geodemographics, and other things a bit more advanced that we won't see, but that are very relevant in spatial analysis and geographic data science, like spatial regression, they're all built on top of spatial weight matrices. And once you understand the notion of what we're trying to do when we build a spatial weight matrix, you have a lot understood already to get the grasp of all of these methods. So just to say that even though this is not a trivial concept and is not straightforward to understand the first time you see it, I think there's a lot of payoff in, in making that effort. So Treat it with respect, but but put some effort to to understand because I think it'll pay off. Okay, so how do we do this more uh, practically speaking? And here we're going to talk about uh, W as the uh, main letter for expressing a, a spatial weights matrix. Okay, so whenever you see from now on in the course that 
a capital W, that means that we're talking about uh, spatial weights matrices. The first thing you need to know is that it's an n by n positive matrix. Let's start from the back of this definition. It's a matrix, which is to say it's a collection of values, of numerical values or numbers. It's positive, which means that these values are either zero or greater than zero. You cannot have a matrix with a negative number. And then the third element is that it's of dimension n by n, which is to say that it has as many rows as observations in our data set and as many columns as observations in our data set, which already may suggest to you that these matrices are potentially very, very large. Now, the key thing that differentiates a spatial weights matrix from any other positive matrix is that it contains spatial relations. But these spatial relations are converted into, into values, into quantities. And more generally speaking, what we're going to, to say, or the trick we're going to use to convert spatial relations into values is we're going to say, at the simplest case, if you are a neighbor of another observation, for the cell in the matrix that encapsulates that relationship, we're going to put a non-zero number. And if you're not a neighbor, we're going to set a zero. So to give you an example, if the first observation in your data set is a neighbor of the second one, then the cell on the first row and the second column will be greater than zero. And if these two are not neighbors, then we'll, we'll put a zero on that cell. The key thing also that we had already seen implicitly when we were talking about the dimensions is that a matrix, a spatial weights matrix contains the relationship between every observation in a sample with every other observation in a sample. And by convention, because we're recording in these matrices only the relationship between one observation and another one, the diagonal of the matrix, which would record the relationship between an observation and itself, is uh, assigned to zero by convention. So uh, by convention, we're saying you're not yourself's neighbor, and an observation is not itself, is not the neighbor of itself. Now, in this definition that I've just spelled out of a spatial weights matrix, I've always been discussing whether an observation is a neighbor of, or, of another one or not. And I've said the trick to convert spatial relationships be, into values or numbers is, is mediated through this idea of, is an, an observation a neighbor of another observation? And if it is, we're going to assign a number or a weight that is larger than zero. And if they're not neighbors, then we're going to assign a zero. Now, of course, the elephant in the room and the big question here that I haven't answered is, what is a neighbor? 